Okay guys, we're back with the next installment of the Opal GT from AMT 125th scale. Let's uh, take a look at where we're at. Okay, we finally have the engine installed into the chassis. And as you can see, we have our drive shaft lined up. As I said in the previous video, there will be an issue with the drive shaft as it's a little too long, so you have to trim it back a little bit. And uh, even if you trim it back a little too far, it's hidden by the cross member, so you really won't see it if it's not making perfect contact with the transmission. Engine's in there. The engine went in very easily. No issues there. Give it a little chance to set. And then we'll be done with the chassis other than the exhaust, which we have to install. All right, the big news for this video is the interior is finally finished. Here is the completed wood trimming on the steering wheel, dashboard, center console. I decided to go with an all wood instrument cluster uh, in the dash. Just thought it was something that was fitting of the car and I kind of like it. You can see the seats are in. I've added seat belts to the car. And thanks to a lot of the informative people on the Opel GT pages, I found out that this is a speaker in the back. So what I did was I put a little steel mesh, stainless steel mesh over the engraved speakers, built a little frame around it. And there we have a nice speaker cover to go along with the aftermarket radio, which I have installed here using the photo etch parts from Model Car Garage. Now, one thing I want to mention is one of the details that was left out of this car, which can, should never be left out of an Opal, is the handle for the headlights. It's one of the most iconic parts of the car. It has anyone who uh, knows these cars knows uh, that about the unique head headlight operation in it. And it has a handle which should be right ahead of the shifter here next to the ashtray. Now this was for some reason left out of this kit. Meanwhile they did include the handbrake and the shifter but they left this handle off so and it's something you don't definitely don't want to leave out of an Opal GT uh, model so what I did was I took a part of the kit that I wouldn't be using which had the correct shape or well, almost the correct shape modified it a little bit and here I have my handle with a little bit of paint sitting right in the part of the dash where it belongs. Now, if you're going to build this kit, the part that I used was the steering arm from the drag uh, section of the build. I would say I wasn't building a, the uh, drag racing version. This arm was uh, useless to me other than modifying and turning it into the handle for the headlights. There was no way I was going to build this car and not put those and not put the handle in there. Other than that, you note the carpeting is done. And all the paint applications are done. The white and blue interior is shaped up pretty nice. They're not really colors that I would have normally gone with. But uh It's a little out of my wheelhouse for what I usually do use, but uh, it came out really well. I let the missus pick out the colors, and since her favorite color is blue, and she said a blue and white color scheme would look great, I decided to go for it, and she was right. It does look great. And I even managed to source out blue seat belts to match the blue carpeting. And as you can see, the interior came out really nice. 
This isn't the most detailed kit in the world, but it does go together pretty well. There weren't too many assembly issues when putting the dash together. The shifter was a little troublesome. There's a peg that doesn't really fit into the hole, so I just cut the peg off and you just glue it down over the hole and it's good as new. The dashboard assembly itself glues in relatively easy. You're going to have to hold it down a little bit, wait for the glue to set as you kind of have to force it into place and it'll pop right out if you're not careful and if you don't hold it in place as the glue sets the upper part of the dash and the lower shifter assembly where that where it meets the center console uh, they'll separate and I'll leave you a space in there that really won't look too good so you just gotta hold it in place till the glue sets I use the quick setting glue so you only have to hold it for a little bit and uh, and it was done so now we have this sub assembly is done chassis sub assembly is almost done once I install the exhaust since I kind of forgot to put it in before and uh, then we'll be ready to get to work on the body but I'm very happy with the way the interior came out very pleased with it all right guys that's gonna be it for this one just a short video to show you where I'm at and uh, I guess I'm gonna see you on the next one and remember just uh, like subscribe give a thumbs up it all helps to keep these videos rolling all right I'll see you on the next one